All right, so what we're working on here in the shop today is the master cylinder off of an M35A2 deuce and a half. We do sell the rebuild kits or a complete master cylinder at MV Parts Store. Uh, you can find us at mvpartstore.com or at countless military shows. Um, pretty easy, pretty basic. You're only going to need a couple of tools. Uh, and trust me, anybody can do this rebuild. For today's demonstration, all that we're going to do is we're going to take this master cylinder apart, we're going to clean it, and we're going to put it right back together using the same parts. Not advisable whatsoever if you're rebuilding one. Uh, this is just for a demonstration because we don't want to open up packs and then sell a master cylinder rebuild kit to somebody and they get it and it's open and they're wondering if everything is there. So some of the things you're going to need. You're going to need either a pick or a flathead screwdriver. You're going to need a brake hone, not to be mistaken with the same hone that you would use on your uh, engine. And some kind of a drill to operate the hone. Alright, so I'm going to use the pick to pull off this rubber boot. Real easy, real basic. Just got to get her in there. Slide it around. Like I say, this can also be done with a flathead screwdriver. There we go. Once it gets started, it pops off real easy. Now one of the key things whenever you're doing any kind of a rebuild like this is as you take the parts off, have a nice clean bench that you can put everything down in the exact order that you took it off. <clears throat> okay. Right here, these little, these three uh, dimples that you see, that's part of a spring clip. It's real easy to get this off. There's about an eighth of an inch gap in between there, eh, maybe a little less. However, this washer and plunger set here does have a spring behind it. It should not come flying out at you, but there's always that possibility that it'll move. So you take your pick or your flathead screwdriver and you simply get down in the groove and start lifting the spring out. Got one side out already. I like to come on over. There you go. Try not to lose it. And see, not too heavily spring loaded. You've got a washer. I'm going to put that down. Leaving a gap, of course, because I got it pick up the spring that's sitting under my foot right now. This plunger. There you go, that's your plunger with a little uh, rubber guide on there for sealing it. We got a brass flex washer. And down in here is another plunger that's got a rubber boot on it. And there's a spring behind it. And sometimes they don't want to always pop right out, but you play with it a little bit and it'll come. So there we go. We got the rubber cap on the plunger. Put that down. And you might just have to lean it down a little bit and the rest will fall out. This spring is actually comprised of three parts. There's this top plate, which comes separate, spring and then this bottom plate again comes separate. The hardest part is the top plate that does have a clip, two clips on it. That can be kind of a pain to get that back on the spring. The bottom one comes off and on, off a little more difficult, but as you can see here it's got some tabs on both sides there so that you can now Slide this spring on. You know, and it looks like I got an important call coming in, so we'll be right back. All right, so at this point in time, you got everything cleaned out with brake cleaner. You sprayed brake cleaner down in the reservoir to get any gunk out of there. You sprayed all your, your bore out. You looked it over, you don't see any major damage. So you know that your master cylinder itself is good. So now you're gonna take your brake hone Remember, this is a brake hone, not an engine hone. You don't want to get the two mixed up. 
you simply slide it into your drill like you would any other drill bit and you can only run it in one direction because if you run it in reverse rotation you'll actually unthread this and what you do is you spray some kind of a silicon lube in here and you want to use that because your brake fluid is a silicon brake fluid so there's less chance of any residue that's going to actually harm anything all right so you're going to and you definitely got to use lube do not do this dry wow uh, okay so you'll take this you'll kind of pinch them together slide them in let them expand and they'll hold their own e even pressure and you just simply s turn your drill on a lower speed and you run it in out in out don't let it come all the way out because then you got to stop compress these slide them in and do it all over again just do that a little bit stop depending on how dirty and messed up your master cylinder is stop clean it out and start the process over you might have to do this three four five six times whatever it takes to make sure that this bore has a nice cross hatch pattern and is clean all right so again like i said at the very beginning i've already kind of gone through and cleaned this one up we're not doing an actual real rebuild but we do still want to keep it clean all right now at this point in time we can start the reassembly process and to reassemble it personally i like to hold them upright like this just makes dropping everything in all the easier so you won't be able to see that process but you'll i'll show you each piece as i'm putting it in it's really nice to have some dot five the dot5 brake fluid at this point in time it acts as a lubricant for this so it'll help everything go back together for the purpose of this demonstration um, i'm just going to use some silicon spray again this is just a demonstration this is not uh not a real life one but we just want to get her back together so doesn't take a whole lot just a little bit and as you're doing this you're going to have new parts you're not going to be using your old parts okay so you got this rubber washer now this gets dropped down in hopefully she lands flat for us nope so that's fine this is why having a flathead screwdriver instead of the pick would work out. I'm cheating and using a Phillips head. But you're just going to go ahead, stick that down in there. Don't hit the sides of the bore. And just kind of work that washer into place. Fairly easy task if I had more light. There we go. Might even be wise to use the back side, the handle portion. There we go, all in place. Just tamp it down so you know it's in there right. Remember, we want to do this process right. We're rebuilding it for a reason. There we go, good. Now you have your spring assembly. And again, remember I said keep all your parts in order. Even if you're rebuilding this thing and you're throwing out the old parts, you want them in order so that you don't have to call me and say, hey, how do I put these back in place in the right order? So, you got your little dome piece on the bottom of the spring, your flat head here, with your rubber plunger. We're going to slide that on there and put the whole assembly down. Drop it, the spring down in first. And I'll take your little plunger, kind of work that around the groove. I want to point out this has a slight taper. All right. Not a huge taper, but a slight one. That's so that as the master cylinder is operating, you know, you're getting the right pressures in the right places and everything is sealed off. You know, so we're going to have to work this in a little bit to get around that taper. If you've got a pick, it just works a little bit easier. And of course, you can see they like to pop up a bit. But, yep, there we go. There. And just make sure that everything functions and is flat in there. Whoop. And don't let it go because if you do, <laughs> it pops the plunger out of place. So don't do that. Don't do that. 
whole process really doesn't take that long. We're taking a little extra time today just to have fun and to show how it's done. Next comes our little brass washer. My bench is a little dusty here, so yeah, I got some little bits and pieces on there. Now this washer might be a little bit curved. That's fine. This plunger riding on top of it is going to handle flattening that out. Put that on there. Now this plunger can be a pain because as you can see this taper is a lot more pronounced. Drop this in there and depending on how good your bore is <clears throat> this is going to be a tight one to go in. And that's okay. So as we get it down, press it down a little bit. I'm going to have to use the palm of your hand. I highly recommend it this time. Place the washer on top. And this is again where a screwdriver comes in really handy. Um, as you can see, I just dropped the washer. This has a bore in it. And this is where the rod that connects to your brake pedal slides into this. Alright, so drop this in place. Grab your washer off the floor. <clears throat> Make sure it's clean. I like to put it on top. Press everything down as far as you can, but it's going to hit that taper. Take a screwdriver or that, that brake lever, that rod, put it in there. And what you can do now is give a good shove and it's going to go down into place. All right. And once it's in place, that washer only goes down so far. Take your little spring clip, slide it over the uh, screwdriver, drop it in the groove, and make sure it's locked into place. This one I was able to do with just my fingers. Sometimes you got to use another screwdriver or the pick tool. And now as you let up, the plunger comes back into place. Everything is right as it belongs. Here, I'll even pick this up. Sorry for a little shakiness. So, as you can see, everything is right back in place, the same order that we took it out. If you were to put the screwdriver down in here, you could see that the plunger operates the way it should. And let's put this back down. And our final step is to get this rubber boot back on. Just kind of walk it around. Grab your pick tool. Go under. Hook it. Make sure you don't put the pick tool through the boot. That's not what you're trying to do. Sometimes just spin it a little and it's on. Voila. Turn it around. Tighten it up for our little brass fitting here. Get some of your plumber's tape. Find a clean section of plumber's tape. There we go. Run some plumber's tape on here. Teflon tape, plumber's tape, whatever you want to call it. Get those threads good and covered. Otherwise this will be a leak point. And for anybody that's ever taken a master cylinder out of a deuce and a half, you know you don't want to be taking this thing out again anytime soon. Hmm. Okay. One th step I missed for you is to make sure these threads are clean. I didn't do that, so would have been bad. Alright, so redo the tape. The old tape was still in those threads, so that's not good. There we go. Fresh tape, no old tape. Spin this in there. It's an 11 16 wrench. You can either use a socket uh, or a wrench. In this case, I'm using an actual pipe wrench so that we got a nice, good, solid bite on there. 
Doesn't have to be cranked too tight. Get her in there. Now one final thing I want to talk about is your cap for your master cylinder. This is an old unit and I can tell this because of the vent style that's on here. When the deuces were first created, for whatever reason, all of the vents went to a common vent line. Your master cylinder, your air pack, and your fuel tank all vented on the same line. So these all came to a T and went out up on the firewall. Here's the problem. You put too much brake fluid in here. It heats up, it comes out the vent tube, there is a possibility you could draw brake fluid into your diesel. You know that the deuces have that line on them that's on the fuel tank that say do not fill above this point. Let's say you overfill it one day and now you go out and it gets hot. Diesel fuel comes up that vent line. Your master cylinder, when it vents off, pushes, but then it draws back in air. In this case, it could draw diesel fuel into your brake system through this vent. My recommendation is get the same type of vent that's on your axles. It's a 1 8 inch NPT fitting, a 1 8 NPT fitting. Just thread this out, thread one of those axle vents in here, and life is good. Or take this vent line and make sure it's separated from your fuel system and from your air pack. They should all have their own venting. Okay? So we just, plus it makes it a lot easier for when you put, you go ahead to add any fluid in your master cylinder ever, that you don't have to take a vent line off in there and now put one back on. You know, it's got to get the cap right back in the same spot. So there you go. Pretty easy process. All told, a little over 20 minutes. It shouldn't take you much more than about 45 minutes to an hour because we didn't hone this one out. It's a very easy process. Any one of you guys can do it. The main thing is to keep all of your parts in order as you take them out. Otherwise, you're going to be calling, asking, what order does it go back in? All right, everyone. Thank you very much for watching.